Good afternoon. I'm Michael Monroe. I'm a technical product specialist for Elma Electronic. Uh, most of you probably have known El Elma for some time. We have manufacturing in uh, Fremont, California, Atlanta, Georgia, Horsham, PA, uh, and then worldwide uh, in uh, the UK, in Germany, uh, in Israel, in France, in China, and India. So uh, we work with, but, but everywhere we are, we work with VME, uh, Compact PCI, and VPX. And uh, so this, in this presentation, I'm going to uh, show you some, from some details of uh, slot profiles and such, but I'm not really going to talk about the technology or any of the technical details. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, where VPX is going, uh, why we're taking directions that we're taking, and, and where we came from. First question is always VME uh, and VPX all came out as uh, open systems. Uh, at a time when it, uh, VME started at a time when people were still buying QBUS memory cards uh, for VAXs and they were paying you know, a fortune, but they had to buy it from the manufacturer because if they bought it from a, uh, from a third party, they found they invalidated their service agreement uh, they, uh, and, and, that was, and that was everything. To, uh, so, so with the idea of open systems, you also have the idea of interoperability. And does everyone want interoperability? Well, that's yes and no. I mean, officially, we all say we want interoperability, but there's always elements within companies and within programs where you're happy if uh, the customer is tied to you as a sole source supplier. So, and, and this really can happen in all of these architectures and in every aspect. Uh, people can do things that uh, are really not friendly to the idea of open systems, but this is something we always fight about. So just where did VPX come from? I, al I already said that it really uh, came uh, as a, uh, a follow-on to VME and uh, in there, there had been a future bus, there had been the PC parallel bus, and, and that all came. And, and all of these buses before were parallel buses. But VPX was, uh, uh, anyway, so VPX was a uh, serial fabric bus, a point-to-point -point bus. And that means we've got meshes and we've got, uh, we've got uh, single stars, we've got dual stars, we've got hybrids, we've got twisted rings, and all of these things. When we had a parallel bus in VME, a card that would work in slot one would work in every other slot. Uh, with VPX, you, you can look at the back plane, you can have 10 slots, and they, all the slots look identical, uh, but each slot is probably different. And if a card works in one slot, it probably doesn't work in any of the other slots. And why is that? We had the concept of uh, slot profiles, and slot profiles would be defined, uh, and you would see the, uh, the yellow would be the data plane, the green would be the control plane, the purple would be the expansion plane, but there's all this white area which are user-defined pins. So if you look at a real product, that you can see the uh, problem that you know, we have the, uh, the, the two fat pipes in the, the top, but we've also got everything else. And what is it? It's uh, things like RS-232, it's uh, general purpose I.O., you've got SATA that might be tucked anywhere, USB, VGA graphics, all of those things were located in different places. And that in lied, the, uh, the, that's where the problem was. Uh, you couldn't uh, plug a, uh, a Curtis Wright video card in the same slot that was designed for a, uh, a GE video card or an interface concepts video or interface concepts single board computer because all that I.O. was in different locations. And in the VSO uh, organization, when we tried to standardize it, there was nobody from any of those companies who was willing to change where his USB and SATA was to match a competitor. That looked like a you know, uh, career-limiting uh, choice that you could make. So at the same time, 
that we have this point-to-point -point fabric, it also meant that although when VPX, uh, when, when it was V to 46, whoops, when it was V to 46, you know, you, uh, you had this idea of a very simple mesh. That was the only topology that was shown for VPX in V to 46.0. Uh, today, uh, we have all, you've got different size pipes between things. You've got uh, uh, things like uh, uh, radial clocks, and, and it really has been complex. So that is, that's another thing that has driven the, uh, the complexity of it. So VPX began to get really popular, though, because all of the members of our uh, small uh, market niche were moving, doing their more advanced boards, their new boards on the VPX architecture. It gave uh, a lot higher pin density and all that. But, and so as customers used it, they also got this idea that they wanted to be able to do convergence. And this is, this really started in, with our military customers. They wanted, instead of having a different uh, uh, separate box with its own power supply, its own video, uh, its own I.O., connections to sensors, for every different function you might have, whether it's uh, radar or whether it's some sort of uh, electronic warfare or, you, or you're looking at jamming signals, the, what, and, and this, this, there's a space problem as, as well as just a problem on maintenance and service and, and upgrading. The idea was to move to a situation where every uh, function was a function on a card, so you'd have uh, backplanes that would support all of these different functionalities. They would have, you know, one power system for them. They might run off of one monitor. Uh, and, but once again, there's the obvious problem that you can do upgrades, but the upgrades have to match the slot that the other card was originally designed for. We had a, a, a new, pro, a new uh, opportunity that I worked on, and the customer was a, was a government customer, and they needed to have uh, two different single board computers that they could use. And because of the problem I just mentioned, uh, we had to deal with that by creating kind of a, uh, uh, a profile card uh, that could be plugged in next to it that would redirect the USB, redirect the SATA and such to where it needed to go for whichever card. But that's really not just unplugging. That uh, uh, requires going in and changing something on the back plane. We also looked at doing uh, surface mount, uh, you know, surface mount uh, zero ohm resistors for links. So the solution to this, though, is and 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 to do this, by the way, there, there are new profiles that were developed uh, that are in the recent release uh, 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 VPX uh, 65.0 2017. We've introduced new slot profiles, but to get the industry to come around to uh, to to cards of a common design. I mean, there's one argument always that was made. Well you know, you'll limit our innovation. Well, innovation isn't about, you know, which pins the SATA comes out on or which pins the, VP, the, uh, the video comes out on or which pins uh, the USB comes out. That's not where the innovation is. The innovation's in the architecture of the card itself and the processor used and how the processor's tied to memory and all of those other things. So it, it, the, the argument was, but why should we change our designs uh, we've got existing customers. Well, uh, the, the answer was that there, well, the, how this happened, and this is what's going on now, the decision was made to more fully define the slot profile. So instead of having something like this that we had uh, back in 2012, which was when slot profiles were introduced with Vita 65 as opposed to Vita 46, and, and the ones that I showed you just a minute ago that were used for that initial convergence backplane that are all part of Vita 65.0, we've now got a whole collection of new slot profiles. And I think Greg uh, 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 Rocco is going to uh, present a lot of these things because he takes a role in, our, uh, in the VSO for uh, defining and writing up these different standards. But the reason that we are coming together to support these is because a large customer block is asking for it. A, a large customer block that can hold, you know, over our heads the opportunity for several companies to sell a lot of 
single board computers if they both make them to the same standard. And, and that is what is driving the change today. I, I mentioned Host and SOSA. Those are being supported directly by the military. And for that reason, those particular committees aren't open to foreign nationals. So what's, what has happened, we do all the, we come up with these uh, uh, proposals, we discuss them, and we discuss the application for them within those two committees. And then they're brought, when the decisions are made, they're brought forward to the VSO where other people can comment on them. And we, it's not always stated why they're being arranged this way, but whether this arrangement makes sense is something that the international community can, uh, can com comment on. So when you have a case where multiple users have come together and are asking for the same thing, one interchangeability, that is what is driving our industry today. And it's lucky that we have this situation because I think the end result is it will bring down the cost for some of those standard cards that uh, are used over and over again, like CPU cards, uh, like FPGA cards. So some of those standard cards that are part of almost every program, uh, there now is going to be an incentive because there will be purchases by the Air Force, purchases by the Army, purchases by Nav Air uh, that will be large enough to justify companies to designing these new standards. It's a little bit like another way of doing a, a multi, uh, uh, an MSA, a multi-service agreement, where companies come together and they decide this is how we're going to do an SFF module or a QSFP, a QSFP module. And, uh, but in this case, it, it came uh, about a little different way. It came with the uh, SOS and host uh, uh, organizations. And by the way, SOS is uh, software open standards. And the idea behind it is that there's all kinds of sensors. A sensor could be an antenna. A sensor could be a camera. A sensor could be uh, almost anything, uh, different types of antennas. And the idea is that many of these cards, many of the cards and the systems within a vehicle, for instance, need to make use of some of those same antennas when they're being called on. And so by standardizing that interface to uh, the card and deciding how the card is going to look in the, uh, inside the unit to accept it uh, is, is really the role of standardization, what is meant by the, SOSA, by the standards, the, excuse me, sensor open uh, standard architecture. So that is really uh, just what I wanted to say is that the market is being driven right now by the fact that we have three branches of the service that are now holding out uh, some contract opportunities that require us to finally grapple with this issue of interoperability that's been talked about since uh, the first Vita 65 was released in uh, 2010. Thank you very much. Yes. Sir.